Good morning. Back for the April vlog. It's a good day today. Harley and I are going to our first ever camp together. Um, I've never done a dressage camp and we're going to a one day dressage camp with Melissa Beer, who has taught me before and actually has taught me on a vlog. Um, I had one recently, I'll maybe share it. She's fabulous. We're gonna go to her yard with a friend and it basically consists of a private flat work or a private dressage lesson, um, a plaiting lesson, some lunch, and then a pole work lesson in pairs. It's just really good to get us both out um, and doing these things, but without the added pressure of like big venues, overnight stays where he'd have to be in a stable because he's currently out at night, which is what I like. And I'm really happy not to be feeling nervous because last time I did feel a bit nervous. I'm a little bit late to the yard. I was doing emails and a bit of work this morning and I just got a bit carried away. So I don't know if he's in. Oh, he is. He's in. Let's say hi to Harley. Hello, Harley Quinn. Are you alright, darling? You had breakfast. I think we might need to... Are you doing a wee? Sorry, darling. We might need to give your legs a quick wash. Bless him. Right, let's wash his legs. Make sure he looks fairly presentable. I'm in two minds as to whether to wash his tail. I just can't decide if it's going to be too late. What's the time? It's half seven. We've got to leave at quarter to nine. Maybe I've got time. It's just so covered in mud. I'll decide when I get there. Maybe I'll get the shampoo and decide. Hello, darling. since you saw Harley he's looking really grown up these days um but one thing that isn't looking grown up is his mane he looks like a cockatoo come on sweet pea bless him we measured him the other day as well interestingly um I thought he'd grown but he hasn't really he's grown about half an inch half a hand is that right half an inch half a hand well anyway he's about 16 one and a half which is only about he was 16 one when I bought him and we measured him at the vetting um, so he hasn't actually grown, but I think he's filled out a bit, so it makes him look like a bigger boy. Right, let's do those legs. Before we dive into the rest of the action from this vlog, I am so excited to share my partner for the April vlog, Wild. Wild are a safe, natural deodorant designed to last for 24 hours and they work on a refillable basis. When I got this email asking to partner with me from Wild, I was so excited. They are such a sustainable brand. I feel like they're doing such good things. Every time that you buy a refillable from Wild, you are saving 30 grams of plastic and they plant a tree for every purchase that you make. Now, of course, that alone is not a good enough reason to buy a product, but if you could smell the scents. So these are three limited edition scents. This is elderflower and watermelon spritz. This is pink grapefruit and lime. And this is Rainforest Oasis. My favorite is the elderflower and watermelon spritz. It literally sounds like a cocktail. And when I was emailing back and forth with the wild team about this partnership, I was like, please let me try the minis. Look how cute they are. They're like mini sticks of deodorant that are like the size of your finger. They're great for throwing in the gym bag, great for throwing in the bag when you're going to a big day like this where it's really hot and you're gonna be out with the horses all day. I am so excited to start my wild journey. So if you wanna join me, then use the code RE2024 to get 20% off. It is for a limited time only, so follow the link in the description for more details. I am gonna do his tail. I've decided I've got time, so I just need to get my shampoo and stuff. Somebody did ask me if I would do a tour of the box that we've got here, the storage, which I will do um, at some point maybe. But basically at this yard, because everyone on the yard is full livery, we have less storage than maybe you would see on a traditional DIY yard because we don't all need individual tools and things like that. Um, so someone was asking where I keep all my stuff and whatever. So maybe I'll do a tour of that later. Oh, so I'm so sorry. I always feel like my vlogs are so chaotic. I always feel like I'm in a rush and when I watch them back to edit, I'm always talking like a million miles an hour. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry, I'm just trying to do up this tripod. And I'm always like, if you were someone who came here for like, you know, a relaxing, afternoon in the country you look at my vlogs and be like wah, 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 wah. <laughs> right let me get the hose five
ponies all ready. Just gotta pack my things now. It's gonna be really warm today, so it's been sort of quite wet and pretty cold in the UK. And it's going up to 20 degrees today, so it'll be quite nice. Just gonna get some hay together. Oh, I feel like I'm in pony club only, I've got my own pony. How exciting. Last time I went to pony club, it was like such a big deal. Oh no, no hay nets. I'm gonna have to find a hay net first. Yeah, it was such a big deal because um, we had to borrow the riding club ponies and figure out whether we could afford it for the year. And then we were there for a week. Very exciting. 11 year old me would be screaming if she knew that I was going to a camp with my own pony. How exciting. Oh, there we go. Over here, hay nets. Just get a tour of the yard at this point. Right, got my hay net. While I get my hay, I'm trying to think what to catch you up on. What's happened? We've had a fairly quiet month because um, I guess March and February were so busy uh, that I wanted a sort of quieter April, March, April. And I have a couple of like things coming up where I have to travel for work. So it's being a bit quieter, but otherwise it's been really fun. He had a couple of weeks where he was feeling really fresh, I think from, you know, changing the seasons, but he's settled back down again now. Um, and yeah, he's going really nicely. I feel like I might be overpacking it, but I worry about running out of hay. If I do a big one, we can split it out between the two of them, I suppose. I'll just do a little travel net. <laughs> you spotted the lorry. Are you ready? Everybody in. <laughs> Melissa just arrived, just lugging the hay over <laughs> to the stables. This is such an odd shot. We just pop them in their stables. Got Frosty. Here he is. Big grown up boy. Just gonna give him some hay, pop some shavings down. So I've got my lesson second. So I'm just gonna put some shavings in the box. Harley's just having a little munch. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have our private dressage lesson first. And then we have a plating lesson and a lunch, and then a shared pole lesson. But he should come straight in. He's got some hay, settled down like he's been here forever. Bless him. I haven't been shaving some years. This is quite nice, actually. I've just cleaned out the lorry. Harley's settled, he's got hay, water, done his stable. So I'm gonna let him just chill out for a minute um, and then have a cup of tea, go from there. He's settled like he's always been here, which is quite cool. Um, I'm not actually sure if I ever I've said this on the channel, but before I bought him, he was with a show jumper who was sort of helping to sell him on behalf of the owner who they knew and there was one time where they ended up taking him to a three-day <laughs> stay away show um a big one i think it was charred and so he ended up being up there for three days and doing a bit of show jumping so he's not he's not a stranger to staying away from home which i think is partly why he's settled as if he's always lived here and partly his disposition to be fair he's quite a relaxed a relaxed young man. today.
Melissa invited me to come down to the school a little bit early so that Harley could have a look around and we thought he might have a look at the mirrors or you can see there's little pots with sort of fake flowers in but he didn't look at anything. I did however realise that I'd brought two of a left hand glove with me instead of a pair so I ended up doing this lesson without gloves. <laughs> So I walked Harley around at the top here and I was so proud of him. There was a time, a uh, very short period of time to be fair, but going in new arenas was quite a stressful experience for him and he might have a little moment, but he didn't react at all. He didn't react to anything. He didn't react to the mirrors, to the flowers, to the other horse, to the gate banging, to the wind. And it's really nice. I felt much more relaxed. I wasn't nervous at all, which feels already like... Um, a step forward from how I felt before the Lewis Carrier clinic for example so it just feels like we're really starting to gel together and, and become a team which is lovely and you can see he's just I think he looks lovely here um, so we did that before and then the real test for me was seeing what would happen when Frosty left the arena because previously when horses left the arena Harley would find that a little bit difficult when we were warming up so fine on his own fine with other horses but difficult when a horse left and the last couple of times, he hasn't done anything at all. And this time was exactly the same. He was perfect. So I think I now need to move on from that idea and move on from that label that like, oh, he doesn't like being left on his own because that's in our past now. Melissa asked us to warm up just as normal so she could see where we were at since the last time we saw her. She said she could already see a difference in his way of going even in the walk, which was always really nice to hear. So I said we didn't have a particular test coming up, but that we were still working at walk and trot um, mostly from a competition point of view. And I also mentioned that in my own riding, I've been trying to have less of a chair seat and less lower leg movement. So we were able to do a little bit on that when we got going too. But even here, I'm starting to find his frame a lot quicker than I did previously. And actually, as we go on into the lesson, uh, we talk a bit about how I need to have more contact because in my effort to ride lightly, I actually take some of the contact away and that isn't necessarily helpful for him when he needs me there. So it was a really, really interesting um, lesson, particularly with the way that he's built, which is he prefers to be kind of quite upright, but then drop his withers. So he's quite an interesting horse to ride in that sense. He's quite a physical ride. I think Melissa described him as, which is true. I get absolutely knackered when I ride him. We found the spooky corner, so Melissa just came down to the bottom of the arena here to shut the gate and move this cone that Harley was having a look at, bless him. One clip I want to show you now, I mentioned about my chair seat, I tend to sort of push my pelvis back rather than sitting underneath it, and so Melissa talks about tucking my pelvis under, and I want to show you one moment when that is appearing, because I think you can see that I'm straighter, and if you also struggle with this, it might just help you to hear her um, tell me it and then to see the difference. It's not perfect, but hopefully you can see that I'm sitting up a bit straighter and that my pelvis isn't tipping back as much. Um, the next thing we did was just talking about giving him more support, but also making him come around each inside leg. So I'll play a bit of that and hopefully you can hear Melissa as well. So then Melissa wanted us to work on doing a little bit of essentially leg yield, but I say leg yield sort of in, in inverted commas, on a circle. So spiralling in and spiralling out to help him connect through the leg and the hand and also to give me a feeling of when he is connected. So we started in walk, um, we're playing around with it and then we went up into trot.
So I appreciate you probably can't hear everything that Melissa is saying and it is so windy, but she's essentially saying that I need to be less airy fairy with my contact, her words, um, and not have such a light hand that he has got no contact to go into. Um, because then if I use my legs correctly and keep him between both of my legs, then there's nowhere for him to go. He just goes out the front door and he loses his balance. So having a better contact that is more consistent and then also making sure that I don't let him fall through the outside shoulder. So all of these simple things that many of us work on. But I think I hope that you'll agree that even towards the end, for me, I think that's probably some of the best riding I've done um, since I've had him. And I can see the difference quite quickly. So he is quite a rewarding horse in that sense. If you do get it right, he quickly rewards you with with nice, you know, nice going. Sadly, my GoPro actually stopped recording about 10 minutes before the end of the lesson because my battery ran down to about 2% and it won't record uh, when the battery's below 5%, which is a shame because you miss what I think is some of the best work, but you hopefully get a sense of what we were working on in the lesson, so. Well, you're a bit sweaty. Good boy. Yeah, I think so. That was so great, even just coming to a new place and there was quite a lot going on there's trains and cyclists and all sorts it was really nice and melissa said um that she can see the difference when she last taught us which is really lovely always nice to hear that i'm very proud of him oh, just had a cup of tea harley's literally falling asleep it's like he's been here his whole life bless him we've got a platting class in a minute haven't we harley I don't want you to eat in these. <laughs> the main down. Yeah. Like this, as yeah. you would do. Yeah. The first part, I plat upwards. Oh. So I kind of do like three or so, kind of throws over there, and then bring it down. Because then you can plat this bit tight. Yeah. Having started here loose. Yeah. So that it's not tight then on their neck. Yeah. And then you can plait this bit nice and super tight. Look at your little curly hairs. Mm -hmm. So like here, it's, it is quite loose, mm -hmm. but that's not a problem because that's what we want. Yes. We want them not to be uncomfortable overnight. And then once we put the band in, put the band in and then another good trick to have is to tuck the bottom under. Mm. So when we finish the with the band, leave the bottom part oh, like tucked yeah, in yeah. so that you don't when you roll it up have all of the yes. the little spiky bits that come through the bottom. And if you need to, you can kind of loosen this off a bit. This is really like you can play with this yeah. if you would need to, but that's if you feel it, it's nice and loose on his neck, but then you can do the plat bit tight. You want them to work properly and over their back, you know, and Oh, you use their top line, but if they're stuck with some plaits yes. in, mm. then yeah, it must yeah. be quite uncomfortable for them. Some of them have quite a long mane, and you can fold it in half and then roll it in a ball. Mm -hmm. Or with his, we can just tuck it up and then roll, and tuck it right in and under. Oh, so you'd go right in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then with your, so you're in the middle of that. Then is yeah. your band. So yeah. with your thread and your needle. You want to go through the middle of here, yeah. and I don't know if you want to have a feel. You can feel yeah. that you're in the elastic band. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the elastic band will then grip onto your thread. Yeah. So you go through the middle of the elastic band, and then you come back. You don't go over. You would come back from the other side to this side. And again, aim to go through your elastic band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pull it tight. And you want to do an odd number of throws through here. And in the end, you're just, so you can let go of it and it's, it's tight enough. So I would just do a couple more. So I would end on the other side of his neck. And then you don't need to do a knot or anything. You mm. just literally pull it up. Oh so you gosh. take the tension off, run the scissors down so you're flat against the mane and sit. Oh, wow. Wow. That's easy. And does it feel like After the plaiting session, we were lucky enough to go and have lunch with Melissa at her house. It was really lovely. We all discussed lots of things, dressage, etc. 
And then it was time for our last and second session of the day, which was essentially doing poles and cavalettis with a new instructor. It's like, I'm not sure I want a second session actually, Mark. I've done really well. Good boy. Again, for this session, we warmed up as normal and then chatted to the coach about our horses and our goals. And before we added the poles in, we just focused on doing lots of bending, lots of changes of direction. I definitely felt tired by this point and I know Harley did too. And it's hard having him stretched down. Like that's obviously something he finds difficult. Um, so I was really proud of him and how he coped with, uh, with the extra session. Once we'd warmed up, we started the Cavaletti work by following the line of the poles around the arena. And then we slowly added in the poles uh, as we came around. Good boy. Good. Well done. So throughout the lesson, we would basically do one end and then the other side on the different rein. And then we built up in between. Obviously, we're having a walk break at this point. Um, it was getting quite warm by this point and obviously they were a little bit tired. But by the end of the session, we built up with a kind of serpentine. So doing one end of the arena, then the other end of the arena, then the middle. So I will show you that as our kind of grand finale. Come on, think of it like jumping. Well done. Good boy. Last one. Last one. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, shorter, shorter. <laughs> Yeah, that was, yeah, good boy. Come on, look where you're going. Thank you. Well done. Well, that was really great. We're just packing everything up. Um, and Harley's just having a drink and what have you before we load them up. And then by the time we get home, it'll be Time for him to go out in the field, I suspect. You ready to go home, Harley? Tired. Busy day, aren't you? You ready for Frosty? I'm just getting up to the entrance to unlock the gate. It's reflecting on a lovely day, like, I didn't feel nervous. Um, Harley was impeccable, settled really well. Just behaved great. We had another horse in the arena and then they left and he was fine. Like it just all feels very good at the moment. He looks absolutely knackered. So I think, bless him, he might have a quiet day tomorrow, but it's been lovely. Well, that is it. I'm just gonna get back to the yard, turn Harley out. He's gonna be out all night and then maybe just do a gentle hack tomorrow. But yeah, thank you for joining me for this April vlog. And yeah, I hope to see you soon, probably for a May vlog. Bye for now.